Arctic cold hits Fitchburg and the greater Fitchburg area. This and more on Our City News. Weather settles into New England. A tanker rolls over on the highway in Littleton. And even with the cold upon us, skiing was in full swing at Wachusett Mountain. I'm Stephanie Allison, and this is Our City News for Friday, December 29th. And now, the latest news, sports, and weather with Stephanie Allison and the entire Our City News team. The cold has taken a grip on all of us here in Central Mass. But first, an overnight fire in New York City has left 12 dead. Tragedy struck in New York City for a second time this week, with two separate fires, both in Brooklyn and also the Bronx. On Monday, a mother and three children were killed in a house fire in the Brooklyn part of the city. The unthinkable tragedy happened to a Brooklyn family when their fire sparked by their menorah gutted their single-family home, killing the three young children and their mother. FDNY officials said on Monday, Eliza and Yosef Azan and their six kids celebrated the holiday Sunday evening by lighting their large olive oil fueled candelabra that neighbors said proudly graced the front window of their family's Sheep's Head Bay home. The family's older child, 13-year-old Avraham, and cousin had been sleeping on the first floor and were awakened by the smoke alarm, allowing them to escape through the side door with less severe injuries. Flames from the menorah catching the curtains on fire appeared to be the cause of the investigation. New York City's mayor, Bill de Blasio, is calling another overnight inferno the worst to happen in the city's recent history. Based on preliminary information, and again, there will be more information coming in in the next few hours, but based on the information now, I'm very sorry to report 12 New Yorkers are dead, including one child as young as one year old. There are four people critically injured who are fighting for their lives, other serious injuries as well. The apartment fire in the Bronx broke out around 7 p.m. last night on the first floor before quickly spreading to the other floors in the more than 100-year-old building, taking the lives of at least 12 people. Among those killed was a one-year-old. Four others are also fighting for their lives. At least a dozen other residents escaped safely. Investigators are trying to determine what sparked the blaze and what made it spread so quickly in this mostly brick building. Our city news talked to the Fitchburg fire chief Kevin Roy about the cold how the cold weather can increase the danger of fires. Glenn? Stephanie, we're with Chief Kevin Roy, Fitchburg Fire Department. Special uh, situations occur when temperatures get this low into the single digits and even below zero, Chief. People want to supplement their heating sometimes. They have a cold spot in the house, which uh, presents special problems for firefighters. Yeah, absolutely. Just over the weekend, it's a holiday weekend. We had a couple of fires across the state involving space heaters. Um, in most cases, placed too, too close to combustibles. Uh, serious problem. An electric space heaters, something, you know, finds its way to a curtain or wrapping paper from Christmas gifts or uh, upholstery or anything, uh, for, uh, stuffed furniture. You always got to be careful with space heaters. Make sure you have 36 inch clearance uh, around the space heater. Uh, uh, it shouldn't be plugged in with an extension cord. It should go directly into the uh, outlet on the wall, the electrical outlet. And if you do use an extension cord, make sure the cord is rated with the same wattage as the heater that you're using. So those things are very important. Heating equipment, appliances, furnaces, uh, carbon monoxide is always an issue, particularly when they're working overtime. It is. We had a couple uh, cases here during this past weekend, again, with uh, carbon monoxide. Uh, you got to make sure that your uh, heating appliances, wood stove, pellet stoves are clean properly. Uh, If you start feeling nauseous, uh, watery eyes, make sure you call us. We'll come meet them. Make sure that the appliances in your home are safe, especially gas appliances like uh, furnaces, hot water tanks, things of that nature, Uh, carbon monoxide. We haven't got a lot of snow yet so far, but some uh, newer systems have venting that go out the side of the house. You have to make sure they stay clear uh, of your... your, uh, 
uh, uh, inside of the building so make sure that there's no blockage going outside to vent the appliance properly. Uh, starting your car, leaving it close by a garage, in a garage, uh, absolutely a problem. Uh, so make sure when you when you start your cars to warm them up, they're clear of the house and uh, fumes are not getting into the house or inside the garage. One of the very special skills that Fitchburg Fire Department has is uh, water rescue. You can't always be sure that lakes and streams are frozen. A special uh, message for the people. Absolutely. You know, we don't recommend going on ice at all, uh, but certainly people need to know that they, they, there's any open water. or You can tell. You step on ice and it starts cracking. It's not safe to be on there. Uh, and as a minimum, I know I've got people in my family who do ice fishing. They wait till the ice gets four or five inches thick uh, to do that, but... We recommend, you know, uh, skate on a, on a surface that doesn't have five or six feet of water underneath it. Um, we had a call this morning that we thought someone was in the river. Uh, it turned out, luckily, to be a false alarm. Uh, but, again, we've finished our ice water rescue training last week. Uh, we do it up at Cogsall. Uh, we've got some new suits, uh, some new dry suits uh, on board, and our people are all trained in that. But you have to use common sense. Uh, you know, just don't go out on the ice. It's dangerous. Uh, anytime it's anywhere over, you know, knee deep uh, you shouldn't be out there uh, in our opinion as temperatures get lower our awareness has to be higher now back to you the cold weather is making life a little tougher for all of us here in new england as temperatures drop the dangers of being outside in the cold increase one local homeless shelter is doing their part to help bring as many as possible inside during this arctic blast glenn fossa stopped by our father's house to find out more and in some of the biggest challenges that we face during cold weather months, Kevin McLean is the director of Our Father's House, and you've been serving homeless people for a long, long time, Kevin, and doing a great job with it. Special challenges during weather like this. Just uh, getting people to come inside. You know, with the uh, sub-zero temperatures, um, people are often uh, sleeping in their cars, sleeping in, uh, in tents that aren't made for cold weather, sleeping in the woods. Um, sleeping in abandoned buildings, uh, encouraging them to um, just if it's even for a couple of nights coming inside. It's not always easy for them to know if they are sleeping in a car and they're going to keep it running. Of course, carbon monoxide poisoning. We talked to the chief of the fire department about that. But other kinds of exposure issues. Hypothermia. Um, a lot of our clientele that stay outside um, do have substance abuse issues so uh, when there's alcohol in your system that of course uh, lowers your, your, uh, your, your body temperature um, you know frostbite, hypothermia just anything along that line um, a lot of times people don't want to climb out of a tent that is already cold so now they're mal malnourished, they're not eating they're not drinking things along that line. You know, special challenges for you. And of course, our Father's House always open and your hotline always open to try to give services to those. Right. Uh, so uh, during this cold weather, it's, our Father's House is typically just a nighttime shelter anyway. Um, during the cold weather, we are open 24-7. Um, so I am going to be open. I have staff in the building uh, from now all the way through probably next Tuesday. It looks like that's when the weather is going to change a little bit. Um, we've let our... Um, our limitations down a little bit so if uh, if somebody might not previously qualify for the shelter we might kind of just look the other way for a little while just to make sure they're out of the, out of the weather if i do get full here um i i do have a couple of hotels that i'm working with that uh, will uh, will take certain people um if uh, people don't qualify for the shelter or can't come to the shelter and or don't qualify for a hotel i'm going to make sure that they have extra blankets tonight always staying prepared and of course uh, looking very carefully at everyone's good health this cold cold season our city news We'll be right back with more from Our City News on FATV. Are taking the cold weather in stride. Even outdoor activities can go on as long as you make sure you are wearing the proper clothing. 
We stopped by the Wachusett Mountain Ski Area, where the slopes were busy as people took advantage of some additional holiday time off. Let's take a look. And all is not lost in the cold weather. With us uh, from the Director of Marketing, Tom Myers, at uh, the Wachusett Mountain Ski Area. Tom, as long as you're dressed right, there's things to do, and of course, there's always the lodge. Absolutely, and look at you. You don't even have a hat on, okay? <laughs> all you really got to do in cold weather is dress appropriately. When you hear things like wind chill factor from the TV meteorologist, it only applies to cold against exposed skin. All you got to do is dress appropriately, Cover your skin. Don't ski naked. That's what we say. Wear a hat. Wear gloves. Wear hand warmers. Take frequent breaks. You know, it's some of the best snow conditions of the year right now. This cold weather has been great for our snowmaking. We've been out blasting the trails. We've been able to make a ton of snow thanks to our expanded snowmaking from last year. And we got a little bit from Mother Nature on Christmas. So cold is what we live for. Right, and of course we've got some prolonged cold activity uh, coming our way with the weather, and uh, this is a special time to cover up, use the appropriate materials like that we're uh, with today, Gore-Tex and uh, all of the different products and the masks that are available. Absolutely. If you don't have the right uh, accessories, you go to our ski shop, you can buy the hand warmers, the, the neck warmers, the hats. Goggles are key when you're skiing or snowboarding. To protect your eyes from the, from the cold temperatures. And again, come in, take frequent breaks, t- ski a couple of rounds, come in, get a hot chocolate. You know, it's, it, it's winter in New England, so, you know, that's what you're here for. Get out and enjoy it. At Wachusett Ski Mountain right here in Princeton, Mass., Glenn Foster, our city knows. If you have to head out in this cold weather, make sure you bundle up. All the southbound lanes of Interstate 495 in Littleton were closed just as the Wednesday afternoon commute was starting after a tanker truck rolled over onto another vehicle, trapping at least one person and spilling fuel. State police said that the southbound tractor-trailer truck was carrying a load of heating oil when it rolled over off the side of the highway onto another vehicle near Route 119. Firefighters and other first responders work feverishly to free someone trapped in one of the vehicles. A 41-year-old Salisbury man was changing lanes when he collided with a tractor-trailer near exit 31, suffering serious life-threatening injuries. The driver of the tractor-trailer, a 52-year-old garter man, attempted to avoid colliding with the Ford. State police are still investigating. Hello and welcome to FATV, Fitchburg Access Television. Each week, we take pride in providing some of the best public access television programs in New England. From FATV live sporting events, city meetings, and school functions, to weekly shows such as Barbara and Youth, Inside and Discussing Fitchburg, Sports Weekly, Weekly Wellness, and Our City. Our dedicated staff of industry professionals and hardworking volunteers is here each week, working behind the scenes, making it all happen. Besides on air, our programming is also shown live online, where you can see our shows in beautiful high definition. You can also search through our archive of past shows and watch anytime at your leisure. But did you know you can also be part of the action? Become a member of FATV, and you gain access to all the equipment, studio space, and classes that FATV has to offer. You can create your own show, volunteer for exciting live events in our studio, or all around the city get our high-quality mobile broadcast truck. The possibilities are endless. For a small fee, you can become an individual member. Or for a little more, you and a group of friends can become part of a rising trend in the future of television. From sports shows to news shows, civic events, and talk shows, you can be in the driver's seat by directing and even starring in your own production. Also, students are free. FATV staff can assist you by getting your new show up and running with professional industry standard equipment. TV studio time, and private editing suites. All you need are friends to help out. And before you know it, you will be on the air. So if you have a great idea for a TV show and want to share it with the world, stop by 175 Kimball Street, Fitchburg, for a free tour of our facility. You can also contact us at 978-343-0834 or email us at info 
at FATV.org. Fitchburg Access Television, working together for a stronger community. The Lemonster woman, accused of setting fire to her neighbor's home on December 18th, was ordered held without bail following a dangerousness hearing on Thursday. Linda A. Brogna, 54, will be held in a correctional facility in Chicopee until the status hearing on February 8th. She's charged with arson of a dwelling and felony daytime breaking and entering. Brogna admitted to breaking into the 51 Douglas Avenue home, held a lighter to the carpeting until the fibers caught on fire. She was arrested hours later after firefighters extinguished the blaze. Brogna has been held in custody since December 19th arraignment. This was the third fire at the Douglas Avenue home since the beginning of December. Investigators are looking into a possible feud between neighbors as motive behind the arson attacks. The recent explosion in the value of Bitcoin elicited stark skepticism from the Secretary of the Commonwealth, William Gavin, who appeared on CNBC's Fast Money on Wednesday to issue a warning to potential investors. The virtual currency, unencumbered by government or corporate regulation, has ridden a wave of stock market optimism shot to a high water market of 19000 per Bitcoin, only to plunge by 30% just before Christmas. As of Thursday, the value of Bitcoin had leveled off at over 14000 Bitcoin can be used to purchase certain items online, but so far has mostly served as an investment vehicle. We'll be right back with more from Our City News on FATV. Our City News on FATV. Fitchburg police and emergency crews scrambled to a report of a man jumping off a bridge on Wednesday. What officials found was not quite what they thought. Glenn Fossa has the story. As the temperatures dip into the teens and early numbers right here at the Bemis Road Bridge, state police, local police, Fitchburg police and EMS all looking very carefully at a reported man in the river. Uh, having jumped off that just moments ago, looking very carefully now at the rescue effort and no sign of him right now. The witness to the man jumping off the bridge allegedly uh, did not want to go on camera, but says he did specifically see uh, someone jumping the rail. Whether he was joking or, or what the story really was, these icy waters are just a reminder of how dangerous this is when temperatures drop this far. Glenn Foster, our City News. Fitchburg public safety officials working very carefully during a very short period of time to verify whether or not the report was true. Sub-zero temperatures creating an urgency there for sure, verifying, of course, that no one was found. You're watching Our City News on FATV. Oh, 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 
local economy is looking up as we head into 2018. Our city news talked to the North Central Mass Chamber of Commerce about what the new year will bring. Yeah, so we're very excited about 2018. Uh, we're very bullish about Fitchburg and about North Central Massachusetts. We think we're, um, as a region, well positioned for tremendous growth. And we'll hopefully uh, see that continue with new companies coming into the area as well as existing businesses growing here in Fitchburg and North Central Massachusetts. And um, we're excited about the, uh, the City Hall renovation. We think it's an important project for uh, the City of Fitchburg as well as for uh, the revitalization of uh, downtown uh, Fitchburg in that commercial district. Uh, we think it's important that, um, that uh, city leaders uh, do something with that building, uh, and uh, it's a beautiful uh, property, historic property, uh, and it's a shame to see it vacant, uh, to see it um, fenced up, and uh, continuing to see that deteriorate. Uh, we think it can be a, uh, you know, a really important revitalization effort for the downtown as well as um, as a solution to um, to a problem that's vexed uh, the city for a number of years, what to do with that uh, with that building. So uh, we'd like to see some action happen and uh, see uh, the, the the city uh, move forward with something uh, regarding the city hall. And I think it's a good plan. You know, we are looking forward to working with our members. We have a very engaged membership, a lot of uh, businesses and community organizations uh, that are really committed to moving uh, North Central Massachusetts forward, and we have some exciting plans. Uh, we have been uh, in the process of, um, of um, holding a, uh, a small capital campaign to raise some money for an economic uh, development campaign, and uh, that is moving well uh moving along very well and uh, we're looking forward we have a good plan in place uh, to really promote north central massachusetts uh, as well as uh, continue to do some of the great work that we've been doing helping provide loans to local businesses as well as technical assistance to local businesses and do some of the business development activities that we do to help promote uh, north central massachusetts in a world where cybersecurity, passwords, and account numbers rule all, we got a chance to talk to security expert Dave McKenna about what this means for small businesses. Let's take a look. I'm here with Dave McKenna from Simplenium. Dave, can you tell me a little bit about your company and what it is you guys do? Sure, absolutely. Um, Simplenium offers uh, cyber assurance for small businesses that are committed to protecting their uh, customers' private information. Um, we do this in five simple steps. Um, essentially, what we, uh, what we do is we break down um, our, our consultation with you as a partnership. Um, we do an on-site inspection to scan your network. Uh, we look for external vulnerabilities. Um, and we give you a comprehensive report to tell you where your um, vulnerabilities might exist. With that, we work with you as a partner uh, to determine how we might mitigate those. Okay. Um, and what are the risks for like the small businesses in this area? Sure. Um, so there's a, a series of risks that exist, um, um, obviously with the cybersecurity spectrum. Um, there's no doubt that in the industry today we're hearing constantly about different types of breaches. Um, in a recent research that I've performed, we found that 93% of small business owners understand that cybersecurity protection extends beyond um, uh, the cyber nature of technology. Mm -hmm. It actually includes your, your person, um, how you operate as a business, how you store your files, and how you protect your premises. Mm -hmm. um, the challenging part with that is that only 50% of businesses have the resources necessary to protect against a cyber risk. Um, so if you take cyber risk as a whole, um, obviously we would discuss things around what your potential is for being hacked, um, how we're managing and encrypting data, what your vulnerabilities are for your network to get penetrated. But then outside of that, we're also looking at how your operation uh, might expose itself um, to um, human error and mm -hmm. um, personal security and physical security on site. Um, so all those risks are things that we look at as a company with small businesses to help them assure that they're actually handling the information effectively. Right. So how would you tell a small business to fix some of these firewall issues or holes in the network? Sure. Um, obviously, it would be dependent upon what types of uh, issues they have with their network. Um, most businesses are going to have a level of appetite as to what they believe is uh, they want to invest in to make a decision on, or some may not be as, as major. Um, most of the recommendations uh, we would give, at least for 
uh, companies to make sure that they're protecting themselves against this uh, in the current environment. One is making sure that they're always keeping up to date on antivirus and patches with their systems. Uh, the second thing is usually we would ask um, a business owner, uh, today, if you, if you were exposed, who would you call? Um, mm -hmm. What would you do next? And that is a big exposure for many organizations because they really don't know who to call next. Mm -hmm. uh, if a customer will walk in and say, hey, I believe that my information were exposed, most small business owners with 10 employees or less would say, I'm not really sure what to do next. Yeah. Um, and, and lastly is really determining whether or not they have the insurance policies to cover if there is a, a, a large exposure with that. Mm -hmm. so. So now where is this company based? Did I hear you guys moved into the Chamber of Commerce right here in town? We did, yep. Um, I, I, being a, a North Central Mass native, uh, myself being out of Westminster, um, this is my hometown area. Um, so we do have an office in Boston, Mass, um, but my preference really is to be in the Worcester County area. Mm -hmm. um, so we are piloting this program in Massachusetts um, for the first month of the year in January, uh, doing free inspections for small businesses um, who are really looking for it. So. That's incredible. Now, if somebody wants to contact you for services, how would they do that? So there's two ways they can do it. Uh, they can go to our website, www.simplenium.com, um, or they can call us directly at 1-833-SIMPLE5. Uh, so. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, and I'll let you get back to fighting the cyber bullies. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we'll be right back this week on FATV. Tuesday, 7 p.m., Barbara and you with State Senator Dean Tran. Wednesday at 7 p.m., Inside Fitchburg with Mayor Stephen D. Natale and Councillor Amy Green. Saturday at 4 p.m., FSU Hockey versus UMass Dartmouth. Thursday at 7 p.m., City Council Meeting Live. Thanks for watching this episode of Our City News. This episode was brought to you by KCMC Management, our local Dunkin' Donuts. If you have a story you'd like us to share, email us at ourcitynewsfitchburg at gmail.com. For all of us here at FATV and Our City News, have a wonderful holiday and see you next year, Fitchburg.